Hello everyone, you're on the In Google Sheets channel. Today, we have our sixth lesson on Google Sheets. In this lesson, we'll break down the if and ifs functions, examining their structure, creating a few simple and not so simple formulas. And at the end of the video, I'll show you one of the most common ways to use this function, a little life hack, you might say. So make sure to watch the video until the end. It's going to be interesting. All right, let's get started. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. Let's go. So any function in Google Sheets is called using the equals sign equals. After that, we type the name of our function and Google Sheets will suggest possible options that match the characters we've entered. Right now, we're interested in the if function. When selecting any function, you can read the help documentation if you want. But for now, I'm here to explain it. The first argument of the function is a logical expression, which can be either true or false. For example, let's write a condition. C6 equals 10. If this condition is true, meaning if the value in cell C6 is 10, we then open and close quotation marks. This action means that we want to display text. The next function argument is triggered when the condition is false. In other words, what will the function return when this condition is not met? Now, let's call the quotation marks and type no. You can see that the function has already provided us with a hint, the result of this formula. Let's press enter and check. No. And if we now add the correct value here, the function will change to yes. The formula turned out to be quite primitive and uninteresting. So let's create something more engaging. For example, let's make it so that when selecting data from a drop-down list, a corresponding text related to that data appears here. That is, when we select Nicholas, this text appears. For Donald, this text. For John, another text and so on. Let's give it a try. We type equals comma then if and press enter. Now we select our cell with the name, next we type equals, open double quotes. This is mandatory because this is text. We need to explicitly indicate to the function that this is a text value. Then we insert the exact name. Ideally it's best to copy the full precise name from the cell. Yeah, after that, we specify what should happen if this condition is met. Since I can't copy the cell's content right now, I'll just use double quotes and close the parenthesis. This will also work correctly. At this point, the condition is met, and the result is an empty value. This empty output is a valid result. Now let's insert our value. Then, we define what should happen if the condition is not met. This will be another condition. We type if, open the parenthesis, and again, select our cell A2. Then, we type Donald, specifying what should be displayed when this text is chosen, using double quotes. Next, we handle what happens if the condition is not met again. Here, we write another AF, open the parenthesis, select A2 again, and type equals Let's compare it with the text. Let's write Joe, put a comma, and then follow the same pattern for all the others. Now we've got this kind of complicated formula. Uh, I'm not sure if it will work when I press enter. One moment, I want to draw your attention to something. I jumped here into the function bar. Here you can see the entire formula you wrote by simply expanding it down. You can adjust it however it's convenient for you and easily edit your formulas. Now let's press enter. And here's another important point. When you press enter, Google Sheets will automatically add as many closing brackets as it thinks are needed. Let's check. I press enter and we can see that it inserted a lot of brackets. Now let's try selecting someone. Q is bike, Nicholas, Donald, all correct, Elon, all correct. When we choose a specific value here, the corresponding values are displayed correctly. 
Now let's copy our formula down so that it works for all rows and now let's simplify this formula a little. Our second function will help us with this. The ifs function. Let's start writing it here. Equals ifs. The ifs function works in a similar way but it doesn't have an argument for the case when the condition is false. It only has two arguments. The condition and the value if that condition is true. And you can write many such conditions. Let's, for example, copy the same conditions we used before and then compare the two functions to see how much simpler this one is. Let's go to the function. Here we select A2, Nicholas. We write our function. We've written the condition here and then again we open quotation marks. Press enter. Copy this value. You see, I pressed enter and it showed empty. There are no matches because cell A2 right now doesn't contain that text. So naturally this results in an error because there's no argument for when the condition is false. Now let's insert the value here and adapt everything else. We simply copy it like this. Now press enter. And let's replace this function with the one we had before. Now let's compare them. Our old function and our new one. Much shorter much more convenient and easier to read. You can also make the view a little more comfortable for yourself. Uh, by pressing the combination control enter you can shift your functions down in a way that suits you. And in this form the formula doesn't look so intimidating and becomes much easier to work with. Uh, press enter. And basically it works the same way. Uh, with John we made a mistake. We didn't include John. Uh, let's add him as well. So We've figured out the functionality and structure of the if function and the ifs function. Now, as I promised at the end of the video, I'll show you how the if function is used in practice. Let's define the problem. For example, we'll now move our summing values for these columns up. We select the row and move it up. Now, let's assume that more data will be added below. Some operators or salespeople, for example, and they will have their own records. I want the formulas in the summing cells to be automatically extended downward, pre-copied in advance. However, if I copy them down like this, we get displayed values, and some cells are highlighted in red. This isn't quite right. I want these values, or rather the formulas, to appear only if there is actual data in the corresponding rows. Now you can pause the video and try writing your own function to solve this. Then compare it with what I'll do next. You may have already figured out how to do this. Now I'll show you how it's done. We go to our cell with a sum function which adds up all the values. Let's wrap it in an if statement. Simply place if before it, open parentheses and set a condition. If a2 is not empty this is the symbol for an empty value. This is the not equal to sign. This is the equals sign. This is the not equal to sign. Now I'm telling the function that if cell A2 is not empty, then execute this condition. If the condition is false, we'll return an empty value, just two quotation marks. Then we close the parentheses. That's it. A simple application. Press enter. And now, if the cell is empty, you'll notice that nothing appears here. Now let's drag it down. Copy the function and you'll notice that where there are no values, calculations don't happen and zeros don't appear. If a value is entered, the calculation appears accordingly. Oops, I accidentally deleted the function. This method can be applied to all other formulas as well if needed. I'll leave the spreadsheet link in the video description. You can open it, create a copy for yourself, and explore the formulas. Click around and try adapting them to your own needs. That's all for now. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to keep watching and never miss a new upload, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. See you next time.